The United States in the early 19th century was the world's first mass democracy. There was white manhood suffrage by the 1820s or the 1830s. Um, the United States was also the only slave-holding nation in the Western Hemisphere in the 19th century to have experienced warfare on anything like the scale that it did um, as it went about the process, this very painful process in the United States of emancipating its slaves. More than 600,000 people were killed. And the great figure who came out of the American Civil War was Abraham Lincoln, whose statue is, is here in London in Parliament Square. So we think of the American Civil War often in the way that Lincoln wanted us to think of the American Civil War as a triumph of democratic values, the triumph of the Union over the slaveholding Confederacy um, represented the triumph of the democratic idea and that was profoundly how Lincoln and, and most other Northerners and many people in Britain at the time saw that great conflict in North America. We can also see that democratic practice, um, a free unconstrained press, um, politicians who were um, dependent on um, popular support in very frequent elections exacerbated the conflict between Northerners and Southerners over the issue of slavery in the run-up to the American Civil War. It would be absurd to say that democracy caused the American Civil War. If you want a one-word answer to the question of what caused the American Civil War, that one-word answer has to be slavery. Without slavery, the American Civil War would have been literally inconceivable. But the important question for historians is to understand how exactly it was that slavery, which had been an issue of conflict between, uh, among Americans since at least the time of the American Revolution, what we need to understand as historians is why that underlying conflict exploded into actual warfare um, when it did in 1861. So what happened in the, in the 1850s was that there was a popular revolt against politics as usual. The old party system of Whigs and Democrats collapsed and the old ways of doing politics in the United States which were about negotiation and conciliation and sectional compromise became fatally tainted. There were a number of corruption scandals in the 1850s. But more importantly than that, there was the perception that the political system was corrupt in a Republican sense. In other words, there was a lack of virtue, of patriotism among a self-serving class of politicians, or to use the 19th century phrase, the wire pullers, what we would now call the spin doctors, the people behind the scenes who were manipulating politics for their own fundamentally selfish ends. And this antipathy to politics as usual um, l created the circumstances in which a new political party, the Republican Party, could emerge in the northern states, only attempting to seek votes in the free states, not attempting at all to build bridges with southerners, as all previous political parties and all serious national politicians had been forced to do up until that moment. And it was that political development, driven certainly by slavery, but also by this frustration with politics as usual, which led to the circumstances in which Abraham Lincoln, the first Republican president, was elected in 1860. And it was that political event which led to the secession of the first tier of deep south states, the first seven states, even before Lincoln was sworn in as president. What's very interesting to me is that in 1860, 1861, on the eve of civil war, far from um, putting pressure on politicians to pull back from the brink, public opinion often exerted a quite opposite pressure. War was seen as a catharsis. It was imagined on both sides that if there was a conflict, it would be resolved very quickly with honor, um, and that their side would be triumphant. Um, and those convictions were often based on fundamental misconceptions about the other society. 
and above all newspapers um, served to feed both the northern and the southern publics with a vision of the other side as the embodiment of a threat to their own society. Both sides, in other words, created very negative caricatures of the others. And what those caricatures did was to reinforce the idea that this would be an easy military victory and that therefore quick military conflict would be a solution to the sectional problems that the United States had been struggling with almost since its founding. What you can clearly see in the 1850s are the ways in which the political system exacerbated the prospect of war. And it's that relationship between um, an open free press and politicians manoeuvring for votes, in other words, between democratic politics and the coming of the war, that is the critical factor to add in uh, to understand how it was that slavery caused the American Civil War.